Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Very excited to have you here. And I am having a kismet sort of day. So I want to check in with you. Last week's interview with David Avocado Wolf, the celebrity spokesperson from Nutribullet and the top nutrition and health expert, it, it was pretty off the hook. I learned a lot. I wrote down a ton that I'm implementing into my life. And one of the things that David said over and over was holy flow, which I thought was hilarious. And I made a hashtag out of it. So hashtag holy flow. How is your day going? And are you in the flow? I think sometimes there are themes to our day. There are things that rise up to the top. And certainly something that's come up for me, you might call it celebrity. So I'll explain a little bit. So this is my holy flow for the day. I was taking Shelby the dog for a walk. I'm in West Hollywood uh, and I'm around the corner from a very well-known dance studio. And I'm nearing the dance studio and what is very obvious out in the street and all along the sidewalk are paparazzi. And I said, oh, to the paparazzi, somebody famous must be up in that dance studio. And they said, uh, yeah, I got the one guy to admit, I always like to know who it is. And he said, yeah, you know, there's a French supermodel up there. Fantastic, I'm all nice to them. But what they don't know is I'm gonna actually protect the supermodel. Cause I really don't like that paparazzi do this at all. And, and I'm envisioning this poor woman or man, right? Coming down the stairs and being besieged by this legion of people with all the camera equipment. It, it's really, um, it's not attractive. So I went upstairs with Shelby the dog. I told the woman in charge and she thanked me so much. She said there were actually secret exits to get out. So I come back and I'm doing some work and the Webby Awards have reached out to me and I've been contemplating, you know, all these things cost money, but they, they want me to enter Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger podcast. And I'm like, yes, no, yes, no. I'm waiting for like the feeling. Where is the feeling? The yes, no. I have to call Carbonite, the backup system, about something going on with my computer, talking to the guy about Carbonite. He's giving me some instructions because, you know, I've got a membership. I back up. I'm a smart woman. And he says, you know, you have a really unique last name, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. I think I know you. Do you do motivational speaking? Do you have like a YouTube channel and a podcast? I said, yeah, I do. I do. And he said, well, I listen to you and you're really good. And I just want to thank you for the work you do out in the world. I'm like, bing, sign. Thank you very much. So I thanked him and he said, thankfully, I was being extremely pleasant during our business call because he said, you're just as nice as you are when I listen to you do your show. So I went, okay, that's my sign. So I entered the Webby Awards, done, done, people. So hold those good thoughts for me and um, exciting stuff because I really have stepped into this being a time of recognition. I've been doing this 13 years, right? And I've won awards in the past, but it's like, it's time, you know, and sometimes it's just time. So Holy Flow Awards. So this show has also been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. I recommend you subscribe to Dear to Dream. It's available on over 40 syndicated outlets, both podcast and radio. And to name a few, you can go to Apple Podcast, Google Play Podcast, Spreaker, YouTube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, BBS Radio, Pandora, iHeart, Spotify, etc. Do leave a review. It's how other people find the show. And I learned this week a few things about Dare to Dream. It is ranked 200 right now in self-improvement in all of the United States. And thank you very much for that, because that's because of you, the listeners, subscribers, viewers. It also ranks number 148 in South Africa. So cool. Number 21 in Slovakia. And by the way, other countries as well. If you want your country to be named, then keep listening. Keep upping those numbers so I can talk about you next week. I want to thank Dr. Dean here and Access Consciousness for sponsoring this show. They do extraordinary work out into the world. And if you're up for some energy healing, for some amazing books, for some amazing courses, or maybe becoming a facilitator of Access Consciousness, go to accessconsciousness.com. They're everywhere, literally in the world, as well as Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com. And I highly recommend them and the work they do. So speaking of celebrity, I have somebody very cool here today, 
And I'm anxious to get into a conversation about love. And what's interesting about this conversation is not about just love, but it's also about moolah. So the question I have for you is, do you want to learn how to create infinite love and money? My guest today is Patty Stanger. She's the star. She's the executive producer of The Millionaire Matchmaker. She's an experienced third generation matchmaker who founded The Millionaire's Club 20 years ago to take clients from the initial meeting through the marriage proposal, coaching members in each stage of the dating process. Stanger has successfully branched into television acting with feature roles on Drop Dead Diva and Days of Our Lives. Simon & Schuster has published several of Patty's books, including Become Your Own Matchmaker, Find Your Match, Seal the Deal, and Raise Your Desirability Factor. With an audio coaching program attracting a soul mate. She was a featured columnist on People and in Star Magazine, and most recently, Patty created PS Match Wines, which is available in wine and in specialty stores, and she's also got a successful jewelry collection called Jetem. Her hit WETV show, Million Dollar Matchmaker, led to other successful books, including her latest audiobook, Secret Millionaire Talks, and new ebook, Patty's Playbook. You can find out more about her upcoming event at Infinite Love and Money. And I welcome Patty Stanger to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you on the show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. And I, I had a little chuckle reading your bio, and, and I know like that's where I want to start. Raise your desirability factor. Okay, I'm in 100%. <laughs> so <laughs> can we talk about that? What sure. Actually, so I have two, two feelings about the process that you engage in. I feel that one process is the dating, right? It's uh -huh. the attracting. The other right. part is the keeping. How do you keep a relationship going on and on and the longevity, which exactly. you want to get to partnership? Uh -huh. Where does desirability play into that? And how do we become more desirable? Well, I mean, desirability doesn't go away just because you get the guy or the girl. It stays throughout the process and we go, we ebb and flow. We like them one day, we hate them the next. And, <laughs> and, um, if there's a sexual synchronicity between the two parties, whether they're 18 or 80, it doesn't matter about age, everybody thinks it's only for the young, they will, they'll stay on their game to keep up the sexual, you know, levels of attractiveness. But when we let go of that, we gain weight, um, we're not feeling good, you know, like especially when women get into menopause, and there is menopause for men. Don't think that there's no menopause. Men's testosterone drops just as quickly as women's estrogen. We start to like not be attracted to the opposite sex because we're not attracted to ourselves anymore. And that's where it really starts. You gotta be attracted to yourself. Do you like the way you look? Are you hitting the gym? Is the dopamine and the endorphins, you know, like, basically gelling together? Are you meditating? Are you taking time for yourself? Like right after you, I'm getting in the bath. I have a big event tonight and I'm zenning out for about an hour, uh, you know, getting a massage before I go out. Like I take time for me. And if you can't afford it, cause I'm sure a lot of people are really in this, you know, really bad economy situation. That's why we're doing infiniteloveandmoney.com. We basically teach you that money and love are not dissimilar. It's attracting what you want to yourself and there's secrets. There's lots of little tips and secrets that we do at the course that we're going to have in March. Okay. Fantastic. So uh, it's interesting because you touched on chemistry and I'll go yeah. back to your event. I promise for people who are interested okay. in the event, just tease you right now. Okay. Got so it. as far as I, I believe I've seen it quoted before that you do say chemistry is everything. Will you talk it's about it's everything until the guy or the girl treats you badly. So in other words, it's the signature flicker, the start, the flame to get the party started. If you have no chemistry, you're not getting a party started. You know, like, there are cerebral types, asexuals, Andy Warhol was one, um, where they don't have a feeling of chemistry towards anybody else except maybe mental chemistry, which is still chemistry. You know, there are certain types of men and women that get 
stimulated by the brain versus downstairs by the, you know, the genitals. And so it depends what works for you. If you don't have that, you're not going to be attracted to the person that you're attracted to. Whether you're gay, straight, pansexual, bisexual, fluid, it doesn't matter. You still have to be attracted. So that gets the party started. But then when somebody treats you poorly or they take you for granted or they ghost you, which is what's happening a lot. Ghosting is really huge right now. Or, or submarining, they come up and they leave you alone and they come up, they leave you alone and you're going, what the hell is wrong? You think something's wrong with you, but it's the other person's style of dating. or They do this in work now. You know, they're ghosting people and submarining in work. So it's their style of commitment. Hmm. So you have to find someone who's simpatico with you. That is where the rub comes in. That is where you go to a matchmaker or you try an app or you ask friends and family to fix you up or you go to events. And it's, it's, it's harder now. We're disconnected mm -hmm. because the biology hasn't changed. The technology is ruling the biology, which is creating disconnection. We now believe we have friends that we've never met you know, on Facebook and Instagram. And then we believe we're dating someone like Catfish, the TV show, we've never met. Okay, this is crazy, crazy. crazy. I mean, who taught people to think this way? So with this newer generation of millennials, I'm like, dude, give me your phone, give me your computer, give me your iPad, go in the room and talk to that person over there. And their social awkwardness. They've never spoken to anyone in person to get the party started. Oh so it's a very God. sad state of a stairs. And you get 80 year olds doing the same thing. Like they've forgotten what it's like to hunt and fish when they got their husband or their wife. You know, like you see in nursing homes, they're like, they're disconnected. The life has gone out of them. The zest has gone out of it. And there's no reason to be this way. So we teach tools and traits to connect, to hunt, to fish, to attract, to find the person in your community that you don't believe exists. Just because you've never met them doesn't mean they don't exist. Hello. So hunting and fishing, once you've been caught <laughs> and someone yeah. else has been caught and reeled in, how yeah. important is it to keep up that behavior? The very behavior that made someone feel, oh, I'm getting this attention. Yeah. It's very good. You bought me flowers. You took mm -hmm. me to dinner. We're going on a date. Things like that are, are niceties, affirm it, aff right. affirmations physically or verbally. How important to keep that? Well, I mean, the 91st day is when the relationship changes. So if you took out your, your past relationships, which I tell everybody to take the most significant for, and then basically look and see when did it go kind of off kilter? When did it feel uncomfortable? When did you, you know, women have this women's intuition where we know when the guy's pulling away and he's testing us a lot of the time. And it's DNA ingrained, especially if he's an alpha, he will pull away just to see what will you do will you run after him which i tell nobody to run do not chase anybody that is not treating you well that is my first rule of, of dating whether you're straight gay it doesn't matter so what happens is is when you see it it's usually the 91st day and it'll go through a three-month trial period by the sixth month you will know whether this relationship is going somewhere or not it takes about six months three months are the perfect stage uh, then there's another imperfect stage. Then there's negotiation. And then there's like, we're in it. And then you have to decide whether you want to get married or not, because I don't believe you date anyone for a year, you know, past a year. If you, do, if, if you want to get married and they don't, gay or straight, doesn't matter. Okay. And they're dragging you along year two, year three, year four. And I'm not talking kids in college. I'm talking like you're an adult over 30. Then you got to get out if that person, um, doesn't want the same things you want. And that's considered a deal breaker. My assistant just went through that. Mm -hmm. Two years, Orthodox Jew, she's not. I'm like, this is not going to be a pretty picture. And every year I warned her. And year two, she finally left. And she's feeling better. And she's getting better men because her love for herself went up. And when you feel better about you, you attract better people. But nobody talks about that. We all live in the dirt. It's time to go up the trees and get the good fruit at the top. Yeah, we live in the dirt. And I think it's, it's really um, a repeatable behavior I've seen out there. People who want to break up, considering breaking up, feel something in their gut. And they, the first thought is, I'll never find better than this. Right. I'm never going to find better. But here's the thing. What do you want? When you realize you're the deal, and I don't care how much weight you've gained or how old you are or how you've never been married or you don't have, you've never gotten the one you wanted. Throw that 
last past life away. We don't want to care. We don't care about that. We care about today. So when I say to someone, like, for instance, how much do you want to get married? And they raise their hands. How much do you want to have children? Okay, then what are you wasting your time with, you know, the schmoes? You know, the looky loose. What are you wasting your times with them? Because they don't want what you want. It doesn't matter how great sex it is. Mm -hmm. And frankly, great sex comes from emotional connection, mm -hmm. from somebody wanting to protect you or take care of you when you're sick. That's a better sexual place. And we've talked about this in the Karma Sutra and all these other modalities of sexuality where they've said, like, it's when you feel safe. When you feel that person loves you and they're going to take a bullet for you, that's when the relationship goes to a whole other level where they will swim mountains, you know, they will climb river, uh, 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 swim rivers, climb mountains. I got that wrong. Uh, they will really search the universe for the right person to stay with them. And we don't talk about that because we're in a disposable society right now. I, every girl that I lose there's another one on Instagram. There's another one on Facebook. There's a supermodel at the party, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we feel we can be replaced. When you stop feeling you're one of, when you, when you start feeling you're one of a kind, you're one of a kind. I say to everyone, there are no two people alike. They're like snowflakes. When you're one of a kind and you know you're one of a kind, you will not go down to their level of thinking. And you won't attract those people anymore either. That's another thing. You'll get tested on it for a couple of months. Bad people, do you still accept? And then eventually they fade away. And they don't come back. Yeah. It's really interesting too when you talk about the times we live in and social media. You know, one of the things I recently went through was I was just contemplating the people I know in long term marriages and thinking, oh, you know, there's a particular fellow in my life, a friend, and I thought he and his wife are always on this step and repeat. They're always going to these red carpet events and they look so happy, all dressed up, mm -hmm. great photos, social media, right? I'm literally thinking about him. Universe steps in. And he says, Deb, I need to talk to you. We have a phone call the other day, buddy of mine. He goes, my wife and I are breaking up. No shit. No Hello, shit. Miley Cyrus. Hello, Liam Hemsworth. Hello, everyone you see that you go, what the, when Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt broke up, we all were like, what? Okay, it happens in every community, every religion, every walk of life. I have seen this over and over again. What you see on Instagram is not reality. Now, these people love to take pictures. Yeah. They love to dress up. They love to get their hair and makeup done and their plastic surgery, you know, and their fake wigs and all that stuff. But that doesn't mean their life is happy. That's a whole other ball of wax. I love you. <laughs> it is a whole other ball of wax. And I think it's really important as friends when yes. we see this, that it is a romance novel we're seeing. You know, there is fiction out there. It's not, it's made up. It's not what's behind the scenes. And I think that's why people are so shocked when the hammer comes down and someone admits we're splitting, we're breaking up. So it's, it's very incumbent on us to take care of what's going on on our side of the tracks and not look out there for affirmation of other couples. Awesome. Right. That's, an, that's, you know, we see these, I call them Sunday in the park brunchers huh. and you see them over, they're supermodels with their supermodel husband, boyfriend, you know, influencer, like, oh my God, who could be that skinny with no breasts. Right. And then you're like, I, when I bought the outfit, it didn't look like that. Well, of course it didn't. It's marketing 101. So you have to start thinking about what makes you feel good. We are not in touch with our feelings. And this is the most important part that I teach. What makes you feel good? And I don't mean a person. I mean, in your daily activities in the day or the food you eat or just like watching a favorite TV show, what makes you feel good? Because this is going to determine your trajectory on how and when you're going to meet that person. And if you don't feel good, we're hearing a lot about mental illness, Billie Eilish, Lady Gaga. They're all coming out of the woodworks. Lady Gaga is single, going mm -hmm. through hell right now. Love that girl. Yeah. Um, you know, I do. I've met her and we've had a good conversations about it. I just feel like we are putting so much pressure on ourselves to get this perfect relationship 
which doesn't exist. I was just listening to Dax Shepard and uh, Kristen Bell. They have a great marriage. She asked him to put the towels away this week. He goes, I feel controlled. They had a two day fight. They cried. They, didn't, they went in separate bedrooms and then they made up in the end, but it was over a bunch of towels. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can get a maid for that. They're not broke, right? So I'm sitting here going like, everybody is going through this right now. You are not alone. That's the most important thing you need to know. You are not alone. Do you believe in love languages? Yes, I believe that, that book changed my life. As a, as a relationship expert and a matchmaker, third generation, I was beyond floored by that book. Had I known this, my whole life would have been different. We didn't know that we had love languages. We didn't know that um, sometimes when you date someone who's the opposite language, they can't pick up your language. You know, I, that's what happened in my last relationship. He loved me in a different way than I loved him. And we just, could, I was good at giving him his love. He was not so great at giving me mine. And he thought it was like, oh, please get over it. My favorite line, a guy says, get over it. Well, get, if he says, get over it, you get over him. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing you need to realize. Because when men don't take women's feelings seriously, you know what happens? We get doubt. And when we get doubt, we get bigger doubt than a man gets doubt. So if a man pulls away and says, I don't want to get married, I'm just not ready, get busy. And the minute you get busy and you forget him and the first guy that shows up that you have a little connection with or feel attraction with, that phone goes off, right? He texts, he calls you because he's feeling your doubt over him. We take a lot of things for granted. And we were not taught, especially women when we were younger, how to do relationships right because we were taught if we didn't have a baby or a marriage by 35 our eggs diminish we're no longer worthy we don't we're not accepting of it norma kamali just said i love hot kamali by the way hot molly she just said she found love at 65. i know that christian bale's father married um gloria steinem and i think they were in their 60s right so love can come at any time of your life this whole business, it's only for the youth, is a bunch of crap. Mm. My mother was married three times. Wow. Yeah. And there's so many baby boomers, of course. You know, there's guys. Right. And you have a lot more women than men. So this is where we get into the heat phase, where we think of the census and we go, oh my God, there's not enough men. What am I going to do? You know, like, and I tell people, go to Europe. Alaska. Yeah, go to, go to a place where there's a lot of men. Like, Breckenridge is 11 to 1, right? Skiing is a great way to meet men, by the way. There's always 10 to 1 girl. 10 men to one girl. But I always tell people like, you got to do this. Like you're looking for a job. You can't sit back and expect the prince to show up because guess what? That story is as old as time and Cinderella has died. Like the game is over. You've got to take action. This whole love attraction, think it, believe it, ask it, receive it. Give me a fucking break. Okay. As a matchmaker, I fix up so many people. Jeff Lewis is dating uh, the guy that I fixed him up with from flipping out and he couldn't get arrested after Gage. And he's a handsome, good looking, successful guy. He just, he didn't meet the right people. We don't meet the right people. We need to be introduced. Girlfriends need to introduce girlfriends. Guy friends need to introduce guy friends. Six degrees. Take your past people that stop putting them on ice for future dates that you, you know, if God forbid you don't get married, you got that, you know, my best friend's wedding bullshit no give it away you're not gonna marry that person no one wants to introduce anyone it's really sad I want to make mini matchmakers about you know, from <laughs> all over the world it's so sad so sad and you know, I nobody read, wants to share nobody wants to share yeah mm -hmm. and we all have single friends like amazing single friends articulate and beautiful and successful and I, I read somewhere where you said get out of types Whatever yes. you think your type is, it's keeping you really- Well, okay, let, let me, I got to preface it because I always make it a little bit wrong then when I say it. Here's what I said. I like hair and height. So if that's two physical quirks I need to get because I can't date the short ball guy, okay. But when you get so specific with the laundry list to the floor, and he has to have a private plane and he has to live in this zip code. Like if you go to New York, there's zip code snobs in the city. Downtown won't date uptown. Uptown won't date West Side. West Side won't date Chelsea. It's like ridiculous. And I said, what about the guy who lives in New Jersey or Connecticut who has big money and bought an estate? Oh, I'm never going, you know, a 201. I mean, it's like ridiculous. 
So when you get to be specific to the point where there's no looseness, you lose the magic. And that's where God comes in. That's where the universe aligns you to be in that plane where you meet the guy that you marry or at the right party, or you went to a wedding you didn't want to go to, you know, or you were at work. So we have to open up the gates. We can't just be so rigid in our thinking. Beautiful. And here you are, you've worked with millionaires as a matchmaker. It's the premise oh, yeah. of your show. Right. What have you learned from the millionaires that you've worked with? Over um, the good, bad, they ugly? Want, they want to, well, this is a really, the handsomer the millionaire, the easier he is to fix up and the nicer he is in appreci appreciation to the matchmaker okay. because he's gotten the hot girl and he never wants the hot girl. He wants the eight. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Like the sports guy who made, you know, a couple of million dollars, very successful, the Calabasas millionaire who bought the nice estate for those who live in Los Angeles. So, and then the uglier the millionaire, the ugly, I mean, I'm talking taka ugly, okay? <laughs> that ugly guy wants a 12. Giselle isn't good enough for him because he never got the, you know, the cheerleader in high school. So he's making up for small time and he is a pain in the ass. So we like the middle ground, you know, who um, kind of know who they are. They're looking for more than a pretty face. Mm. I like men who date age appropriately. That's my favorite. You know, age appropriately is a big deal because most men who are like turning 50 will not date to women in their 40s or 50s. They have to have the, you know, they maybe go up to 30 if they're lucky when they have money. And, you know, you have to realize there are plenty of good looking rich guys out there that don't join a matchmaker that are really good at dating. But the ones that come to us are like, kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm run out of options. Um, I don't live in the right neighborhood to meet women. Everybody's married by me, you know, or I won't date at work. I'm a doctor and I work, you know, 60 hours a week, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are reasons why they come, mm -hmm. you know, so, or, or for instance, I had one yesterday where the guy said, I travel so much that I don't even know how to meet a girl anymore because he's always on a plane for work and he wanted someone to travel with him. So there's things like that. And how, in general, how successful do they need when they are millionaires? How successful? Oh, they don't need it all. No success, no success. Nail, nail, nail tech is, is fine to go. Hairdresser <laughs> fine to go. Like, and it's sad because I say, don't you want someone successful? And they go, no. Now here's the thing. The less money they have, the more successful they want. So the really rich, like the billionaire level, no. They want to take care of you. They they're the alpha. They love taking care of women and spoiling them. Sometimes I have to you know, yell at them because I said, if you leave with your money, you're going to get what you pay for. Right. Okay? And we don't want a Russian Venmo hooker. So you have to be careful of that, you know? I want someone who's got a green card, who knows what she's doing. And I like women that have their own little career. I'm an entrepreneur, so I love those women that started, you know, in their houses like you did. And, you know, you've got your own little talk show going. And they thought of like, my passion is going to become my project, which is going to become my career. I love women like that. We need more entrepreneurs. Well, mm -hmm. I, I cannot thank you so much. You are hilarious, by the way. Thank you. And I cannot think of a better segue. Thank you, Patty, because no that is what I do out in the world. Uh, I'm a visibility media expert. And so besides this show, which has been on air, on podcast for 13 years, Dare to Dream has sustained me. I appreciate the visibility it's given me. And I am a book writing coach. I also have a program that takes authors to a guaranteed international bestseller. Mm -hmm. And I teach the ultimate visibility formula and the ultimate visibility formula is about to roll out. We're just going to take a quick break here so I can tell you about it. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility. And it is my name, no E, D-E-B-B-I-D.net slash visibility. How to be interviewed on radio and podcast in 60 days or less, even without prior knowledge of publicity or even knowing where the shows are because I provide all of that, including live coaching. You will learn how to be interviewed on shows. You will learn where the shows are. You'll receive a list of the shows and the contacts. You'll have your media kit built and your pitch letter, have your speaking points. You'll know how to avoid freezing or fudging or getting nervous because you're going to be very confident during the process. And the program is for people who want to be an authority in their field. In fact, entrepreneurs are perfect because visibility gets your name, your business, your message, your services out there more quickly than anything else. 
you can be interviewed within six weeks. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility. And if you're tuning in after we started, Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream, I'm interviewing matchmaker and relationship expert, Patty Stanger. You can go to their event coming up, and we'll talk about that a little later on. And it is at www.infiniteloveandmoney.com. Okay, Patty, there's a quote from Joseph F. Newton Men, which reads, people are lonely because they build walls instead of bridges. So I just want to talk a little bit about loneliness. How okay. lonely are people in their lives? They're very lonely. I mean, we we're friendly with Netflix, which, you know, not getting rid of tomorrow, but we're very lonely. We're in isolation. Um, we live in our houses. We work from our homes for the first time in history, which no one's talked about because we used to have connection at work, you know, besides the social groups that we joined or like the AA or whatever, we belong to the country club for golf. So we are very lonely. Um, we like in LA, it's a, it's, it's a really lonely place compared to like, I grew up on the East coast. And when I was in Florida two weeks ago, it is like popping with, you walk outside, you make a new friend. LA is like, you got to drive everywhere. And most friends don't want to drive to you or you to them. Like you're not getting in a car on a, on a Friday at like three o'clock to go down to Orange County. That ain't happening. <laughs> so um, we're in a place of disconnection and we don't want to admit it. Nobody wants to admit they're lonely, you know? And then the first thing you do is either you do drugs or alcohol to spill the void, and then you end up on antidepressants and going to the doctor. Because what really is happening, you don't have that social fix mm. that even our parents had back in the day. Mm. It's a very lonely time. Uh, I'll say. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, and it makes sense, and it's really true living in LA too, I concur. It, there's a really funny snobbery here, much like you described. Oh yes, completely. Coast, right? You live on the east side? I, I'm on the west side. I no, I'm on the west side. I'm in Marina Del Rey. But what, what, what I love about it is that there is a hum that when you get off the plane, you feel the sense of anxiety, like everyone's treading water and going <laughs> like that, like a dog, right? Where you don't feel that in other states because we're obsessed with Hollywood. It rules our industry. It is not Wall Street. Wall Street shuts off at three o'clock, only works, you know, five days a week. So we have an industry that's 24 seven, like when Kobe's helicopter went down, you know, we were all like gasping and we were in the middle of the Grammys. You know, I was at the rehearsals, like everything was going crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it's, it's just a really hard time. You know, it reminds me of 9-11. Right after 9-11, everybody was reaching out to those that we loved and feeling like there's a way, like it was one of my busiest days in business. Everybody wanted to get the call where they called a loved one and said, I love you. You are the love of my life. And so no, all these people were calling me going, I don't have, I don't have, I haven't been married. I don't have a date. How do I find that connection that I watched on TV? You know, we played those tapes over and over again. So it was really sad. So we're going through that right now. We're going through a time of, you know, fear. It's a fear time. Right. Really what's happening. Yeah, I agree. And I think the number one thing you have to do when you're in fear is meditate. The more you get into center with yourself, like I do transcendental meditation. You don't have to do that, but I do TM twice a day. The more I get in center with myself, the less fear I have and the more I'm proactive and I get clarity. We want clarity. We want to know what is the next step to do that I know is going to succeed and I'm not wasting my time. And sometimes it'll be like, hey, you know, get out there and join a group. Make a friend. You've been responsible for a lot of successful matches and marriages. So third generation matchmaker, I find that fascinating. Can you pull back the curtains a little bit? Mm -hmm. Explain what is that gift like? What is it you see? What is it you intuit? How do you know how to do what you do? It's kind of good and bad. It has a curse quality to it, to be honest with you. So my, my grandmother married my mother off in her first marriage and it didn't go, it didn't end well except I came out of that marriage. So she's like, I gotta get married you again. And it was like 1960 something, it was Mrs. Maisel era. And nobody was really getting divorced yet. And my mom was cheated on just like Mrs. Maisel. And the rabbis in the temple said, you know, to my grandmother, just like if you watched the last season, um, uh, I don't wanna give too much away, but there's a matchmaker, a new one coming to town. 
And so like Rose had this gift of, of fixing people up, so did my grandmother. And it's kind of a curse. You can feel whether or not people belong together. I remember when Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, um, well, Ashton Kutcher got divorced from Demi and he had broken up and I said, oh, he should go out with Mila. And everybody's like, are you crazy? They know each other from the 70s shows and Bravo took my quote, put it on the dish, then Access Hollywood blew it up and it was like, they ha it happened. So I'll get a feeling and a knowing that I can't stop and usually it ends up correct. Now in the same respect, when you're a matchmaker and you date, ooh, that's bad. Cause you see everything negative. You, you know, most people lead with their negative foot. And you're like, yeah, that's not gonna work. So you're discarding more than accepting. That's and when you ex part. and when you accept, sometimes you're like, God damn it! I knew I shouldn't have dated that guy. Why did I waste two years with him? You know. So it's like it's got its curse quality to it. Also, yeah. it's, we're very intuitive. We can feel who's positive, who's negative, who's going to do this, who's going to do that. And then it can also work in work too, like in a business meeting. Who's you're like, I shouldn't. The paperwork looked great. Everything was good, but you know not to go into business with that person, and you do it, and then you get screwed. You know, it's kind of the same quality but do you have a matchmaker you can go to that you know i do not that suck that sucks right yeah, yeah. No, I do that not. needs to change for sure there's not a lot of us out there we're a very small community um we were growing and then the apps kind of gave us that wall street 2008 market crash so we're all kind of coming back from it because people are realizing the apps are not the issue the technology is great technology is fantastic they did a great job on these apps you know whether you watch tinder match whatever um but the quality of people that are attracted to it you know there's 130 single million people in the united states and only like 20 percent are on those apps and most of them there's nothing wrong with blue collar but if i'm educated and i went to college and i have a master's degree or i built a business i want to date my own level what we're finding is there's not enough men on those apps who come with those kinds of qualities mm -hmm. you know and because it's free and then the two percent net worth male is hiding like it never used to hide. I don't know if it had something to do with the Trump administration and what's going on. Nobody wants to spend money. It's a very weird time. But during Clinton, everybody, the streets were paved with gold and they were coming down to, from Silicon and renting houses. That's how, probably how Airbnb started. And they were doing the same thing in New York and Miami and all the major cities. And they were like actively looking for women. Now it's kind of like they're pulled back. But I will say if you go to Silicon Valley, it's mostly men. You know, they're hoodies and you might have to take them to sacks to get new clothes, but you know, they're, they're a work in progress. Okay, girl. Yeah. I am a certified wine specialist. So okay. when I read PS wines, I yeah. I'm in, tell me about your wines and the well, selections. It's, it, we, we went through, a, a, we, we sold out on my original Sweet Red Sparkling, which had 94 out of 100 points on one spectator. So right now I'm looking for a new partner to revamp this because I inherited back from the people that were doing it and we didn't see eye to eye on the marketing. So I'm looking for an investor right now to bring it back to life because it has it has the prestige from one spectator, which there's only two in the world. There's Rosa Regali and us. And they're, they're red grapes, from Italy, um, they're 100% organic and natural. And what's really nice about it is you can add other, because it's a small alcohol content, you can add other alcohol to it. So I've done like vodka and tequila, and I've made signature drinks like the cherry bomb out of it, stuff like that. So it's a low, qual low alcohol content, but it's got flavor like you've never seen. And we're gonna get that back and up and running. I'm working on that now, yeah. Okay, good, I wanna know about it, because. I'm, I'm I mean, sometimes you get into business with people and you think they have expertise. And what I found out later is like, this was not a good fit because I saw marketing in a different way. You know, I come from Bravo and Bethany was skinny girl and I saw something completely different than they did. They were little old school wine, wine people, but, um, we'll, we'll get that back up. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, cool. And you could always check out, um, I used to be involved with this wine group where John Legend's label is. Oh, and really? It's called Boisset, B-O-I-S-S-E-T collection. So if, if you're ever interested, I can. Okay, uh, that sounds great. Yeah. But yeah, yes to the wines, yes to yeah. the wines. I mean, it, my favorite thing is it has aphrodisiac qualities in there, you know, and I mm -hmm. own part of Taikusaki, which is another brand. And so I learned a lot about aphrodisiacs and what 
you know, what flavors from vanilla to chocolate to need to be in the ingredients to get you a little zhuzh downstairs. <laughs> Next thing I'm going into CBD and weed because I love that stuff. That's my favorite stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I just as I just heard somebody say on on television the other day. Yes, I'm getting a little damp in the basement. <laughs> yes, yes, that's exact. That's exactly right. Yes, nice, <laughs> nice, nice that she's still getting damp. That's right. You hear a lot of women are not. There's a little bit of a desert out there, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty important. Pretty important for that love. So we started out and you made the remark that there are secrets, love yeah. and money. Is there a yeah. connection? Yes, there's a connection. Love and money. Well, most and you have men, both. Yeah, well, most men feel if they don't have money, they can't date. Isn't that an interesting thing? They don't realize you don't have to go to the most expensive hotel to take the person out. Like you can literally come up, there's like a hundred free things to do in LA. And I once went on there and I was, I was telling my ex like, you need to do these things. I love these things. Like, cause there was a lot of cool things in there I had never done, you know? And so you, all you have to do is get creative. It doesn't have to be about the money. Sometimes the guy who's the most romantic wins the girl over the richest guy who doesn't have like anything upstairs. So I don't agree with that. There is a disconnect that if I didn't make money, I'm not worth it. So I'm not worth love. So see how that works together? I'm not worth it. I didn't get the big house. I didn't get the promotion. I didn't get the nice car. I can't go on vacation. I can't send my kids to camp. And therefore, I just, oh, no one's going to want me. Who's going to want me? It's just like weight with women. Women are heavier. They're like, oh, that's it. Until I lose that 30 pounds, I'm not going on a date. Women do that a lot. Men don't do that, but women do that a lot. So it's the same feeling. It's basically worthlessness. And who's to say, how much money do you need to make to be happy? So I always tell this to people. And when they make the list, they go, I don't need very much. I go, right. But you're reaching for Oprah stars. Mm -hmm. You know, you want the private plane and the Warren Buffett life or the Bill Gates. And it's ridiculous. Do you really want to be that way? You got to pay a lot of people to take care of your shit. Yeah. You boat, a yacht or whatever. Right. So I always tell people like, what do you really need to make you happy? And you'd be surprised. That's why people downsize when they get older. They don't need all the big stuff. Yes. Or the clothes. I haven't bought, you know, this year I went on this weird thing. I, 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 my friend gave me a challenge. I have a lot of clothes in my closet, closet I never wore from the days I was on the air. And she said to me, I dare you not to buy one item of clothing this year. Wear what's in your wardrobe. And I did all of last year that way. You all shopped in my closet. And I shopped from my closet. Now I have a big closet and I am a junkie. It is fashion, you know, is my passion. But I was like amazed how many ticketed items still were in style that I never wore shoes. I'm a shoe whore, as anybody's seen on my Instagram when I went, I cleaned out all the shoes and I'm selling them. And the other thing was I said, if I sell stuff, then I get a little extra money as my bonus to go shopping. But it cannot be from something new. I'd have to sell to replace. Yeah. That's excellent. I did a little, I did a little test. So yeah. you'd be surprised. The other thing was... Um, I also felt like, why do I have all this? So when I was going through the Marie Kondo experience, I was like, why do I have all this? Where did this, you know how much, I could have gone to Europe five times first class around the world. Like, what was this for? And so you start to take a step back of like, how many Birkins do you need? How many Chanel's? Like, who am I impressing? Who am I impressing? I teach you that, you know, Susie Norman is a big mentor of mine. I teach you that money is basically balanced. But we don't talk about that. We talk about money as image, you know? Mm. It's really interesting. It's basically balance. If you have money and it's flowing and you're paying the bills, you have no anxiety, you have no worry, right? You have no worry, you have no anxiety, you date. You feel good. I can go anywhere, I can buy anything. I can go, I can do what, anything I wanna do. So they're kind of connected in a very you know, serious way. Now, there are those who can manifest money, mm -hmm. like me. I'm really good at, today I, can, I want something, let's go. But then there are those who can't manifest love, but they're good at money. And then the reverse happens. I'm good at love, but I'm not good at money. And mm -hmm. very few people can do both. So we're going to teach you the tricks of the secrets. We have like five secrets of how to manifest both. So they're simpatico together. Beautiful. How you, and you're going you're gonna to be able to make a goal for a year, one goal for a year that is attainable, not crazy, you know, and it won't be fame based. I won't allow fame in the house. So you can't say to me, I want to be famous. Okay, what does fame mean to you? Does that mean you get more money? Does that mean you get more love? Do you get better health? What do you get from fame? 
because fame is not a goal. It's not an intangible. You can't hold it in your hands. You can't hold, you know, when you're in love, you can hold a person. You can actually physically hold money in the bank. So tell me this event coming up, right? Infinite love and money. Uh, you're doing it with my pals, Orna and Matt. Yes. Let's mm -hmm. talk about it. What are people you're talking about what they're going to get out of it? Right. When is it? And who are you looking for? Who do well, you? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's in March. You have the website, infiniteloveandmoney.com. We're only taking 40 candidates. Mm -hmm. So if you want to sign up, you got to sign up now, even if it's just an inquiry call, because we, it's very, very secret, uh, elite, top of the line. Think of Soho House Secrets. You know, like if you want to join a club that you want to belong to, it's very secret. Now, these are the millionaire secrets that I know, the billionaires. I fixed up Sumner Redstone. I mean, I know billionaires. I grew up in Short Hills, New Jersey, one of the wealthiest suburbs on the East Coast. I've been around money my whole life. So we're going to teach you how to get from where you are. If you've got poverty consciousness, which 90% of the population has, we're going to undo the poverty consciousness. And I have a trick that I use a med it, it's basically like a meditation mediology where it's like something that I'm going to unhook something in your brain that's going to go away from the block. Okay. A good friend of mine is Marissa Peer. If you look at her up on YouTube, she's one of the big, biggest hypnotherapists in the world. I work with her consciously on a regular basis. And she believes there are three reasons w what happened in your childhood to set up the trajectory of why you think about poverty or love. Wow. Okay, three reasons. And we take you to those three places. Um, I'm also going to teach you how to get in the flow of money mm -hmm. by spending money, which nobody wants to do, mm -hmm. even if it's just $100. Mm -hmm. There's a great game that Esther Hicks has in her uh, love attraction series. It's, yeah. it's the prosperity game. And I've been playing that for a hundred years. I've kind of tweaked it to my own version, but it works like a charm because we used to write checks and now we don't do that. We do direct deposit. So you have to be on the computer and we would make a fake checking account and then put a thousand dollars and two thousand dollars and every day we would spend it. And we got to a place where there was so much shit we bought, there was nothing left to buy. But the money kept coming in like on a regular deposit. When you get in the flow of that, money starts to flow. People who owe you money start paying you back. You get something in the mail that was unexpected, a check from the insurance company. You know, you get a job offer with more money or a promotion. Or it's something as simple as winning a lottery or going to gamble in Vegas. Like money starts to come to you in very different ways. And I teach you that trick. Um, also on the love side with the Walters, cause they are relationship experts and they are married and they're fabulous. I've worked with them before. They've been on my show. We're going to teach you the blocks of why love is not flowing to you. That doesn't mean you're not going to actively have to go out of the house and do something. It's not like the secret, you know, it's like, it's not, if you've tried the secret or law of attraction and you've been disappointed by it, then we have the goods because we're teaching people to shift and get clarity. Clarity in love, clarity in money, even clarity in health, which I do all the time when I'm not feeling good. I just got off the flu, and my flu time was half the time of the two weeks on the norovirus mm -hmm. than a week because I shifted my consciousness. My doctor was like, how did you get over the flu so quickly? I'm like, I'm a manifester. <laughs> I can manifest anything. Like, he was like in shock that I did that because Everybody was down for three weeks on the norovirus. Okay, so we're gonna teach you the techniques of law of attraction that didn't work for you. There are specific steps that we use that is really our infinite love and money methods. Mm -hmm. and, and, Wal and the Walters and I are like on the same page when it comes to love and money. So we're teaching you tricks that will help you rendezvous quickly with whatever you need. We don't wanna to give too much away today, but I will give you one one technique is singing. Okay, stop the presses. Patty <laughs> said singing. I know. Is this yeah. karaoke? Is this singing. no singing? In, it doesn't have to be karaoke. You don't have to go anywhere. Singing in your house to your favorite tunes on Spotify or iTunes, and making a playlist of your happy music. You make a happy music list. You sing along to. You can get the words online right now. That's my favorite part. You can go Google the words, and. You start singing, your dopamine and serotonin raises to a crescendo. When you feel good about that, you're gonna, you're gonna basically 
get in a place we call the zone and you're going to be able to see what you crave and feel and want then you'll go to sleep you'll wake up the next morning students will start moving so the whole secret is to move the energy and it's not like you can't do work so it's not like you're just sitting in an, an ivory tower like a monk and just going um here it is it's not like that you know there's still work to be done like you'll get like I'm really hungry and I, I don't eat pizza. I'm craving pizza. Where's the best pizza in my area? You go to the pizza shop, there's the hot guy getting pizza and he's saying, I don't know why I never eat pizza. I've seen this before a million times. So it's getting the serotonin, the dopamine, which is the happy, happy factor into your DNA. Remember everything is, is the brain is controlling everything in your body, mm. but you're predetermined to a certain type of subset of DNA. It's like biohacking if you know anything about biohacking. So we're gonna biohack the brain so that we get into a happy place where we don't have worry about what our lack is, love, money, health, and then it's going to come, but it's going to give you clarity to take steps towards the action of what you want and thus will create the manifestation. So there's tricks, there's tricks, basic tricks. Whenever I'm down or depressed, I mean, this week was really depressing with Kobe, right? We all felt right. like, I mean, the energy in LA is just beyond anything you've ever felt. So what happens is you get into a place of depression over something like that. And then you go to a place of appreciation, right? Because you're like, oh my God, thank God I'm alive. Mm. Thank God I still got my kids. Thank God, uh, I, 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 you know, I'm never going to get in a helicopter again because we found out today that the, you know, the whole NTSB, FAA was all messed up. They didn't have security measures and whatnot. And now you're like, well, I would check that the next time I got in a helicopter. So we're learning as we go. Mm -hmm. And then we're saying to ourselves, you know what? I'm really grateful. Mm -hmm. Grateful that I'm here. Mm -hmm. Grateful that I'm over the flu. Grateful that I've got, you know, a great job and I'm helping people. Grateful. And then gratefulness brings in those things you desire because when you're grateful you're happy and when you're happy you attract other happy people without a doubt 100 percent. But, it, but it's a simpatico thing like nobody talks about it they just think you sit there meditate look look you can visualize all freaking day long you know shaki gawan 101 from the beginning who started it all and it won't come and you're like, why won't it come? But I spent time and I was really happy and I went into my visualization and I don't understand why it's not coming. And it's because you're not in harmony. It's not so much love attraction. You're not in harmony with the desire without worry. So I was taught a long time ago, when you worry, you know, that's resistance. We all know that, right? You push the thing away that you want the most, right? But what if I told you, if you worry, you'd still get what you want? Hmm. Yes. And that's the intrigue. That is the fine law of attraction, right? Because I've taught that to people. And what has happened? I said, okay, so you're really worried you're not going to get into college. I had one of my friend's kids and she wants to go to Yale. And she's like, I'm, I'm not going to get in. I just know it. I'm only going to have to go to GW. Oh, wow. GW. So I said to her, what about GW? Is it good? He's like, well, they have hotter guys. I did go to the campus and they have better food. I tasted the food. I spent the weekend there. And it is a cooler city, Washington, than New Haven. I go, oh, well, then it sounds like it's a pretty good match for you. And the next day she got into Yale. But she was worried the whole time, the 24 hours she was worried. And I said to her, you know what it was? You were realizing worse came to worse. I can still go to GW, have a happy experience, even though I prefer Yale. And I'm really longing. You were still longing. It's like longing for the guy to call, the number one guy that you want. I always tell people, date a pair and a spare. Because the top seed may not come through, right? He's the one you can't wait to call. You're like, you're waiting by the phone. You're checking your text messages. You're checking if he's on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, right? And then the second seed is usually the cusper. The one you're like, yeah, he's really cute, but he's kind of short. Doesn't have a lot of money, but he took me out to a really nice dinner. He's got a lot of ambition, but he's not where he wants to be. So they're the cusper, right? And usually the cusper is the one that comes in as the marriage partner, because the cusper is the one you're most relaxed and comfortable with without mm -hmm. worry. That's not to say number one can't come around. And usually when you accept the cusper, what happens? Number one comes back and says, hey, listen, I was dating someone else. It didn't work out, but I realized you were the better deal. Yeah, bye dude, found somebody else. <laughs> so then you end up with a cusper. Well, there's a cusper, and then the third, there's the third person is the best friend, the one you never dream about dating, but mm -hmm. you do everything with. You can fart, you can burp. He doesn't really care. He loves you who you are, and sometimes the, be the best friend comes in because the best friend has been there the whole time, wow. and no guy hangs out with a girl if he's straight unless he wants to, 
You know what I mean? <laughs> Very much. So I know what you mean. Work. I got your number. Yeah, no. this, is, this is, oh my God, this is like comedy. I got to tell you, we're going to take a very <laughs> quick break. And then we'll, okay. Patty, thank you for making me laugh so much. This has been, this is so far, like incredibly enjoyable for me. Folks, this is Dare to Dream. I feature on this show very successful leaders who have created important goals. And how about you? We're talking here about infinite love and money, right? So doesn't that sound great? What would you do if you knew that you couldn't fail? What would you do if you were ready to live big and bold and free? You can become part of the Dare to Dream podcast. You can join this number one transformation conversation available today. Help the show. You can donate money, donate a dollar cup of coffee or more, go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. I post the shows there and much, much more when you join. So if you appreciate this program and like the due to carbonite today, clearly this show goes out really far. If you're enjoying the insights here offered to help you fulfill your life and your big purpose, learn the ways to live healthy and create your big dreams. Join us at patreon.com slash dare to dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream. I'm interviewing matchmaker relationship expert, Patty Stanger. And again, the event coming up is at Infinite Love and Money. Remember, they're only taking 40 people. You do need to register in order to be, I assume, vetted if you're a good fit for this. And it sounds like they're going to be delivering a lot. So Miss Patty, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future? Well, you know, you know, it's really interesting. I, here's a good manifestation story. So I took a break from several of my shows. I still produce and I wanted to do scripted TV, not acting, but producing and creating content. Mm -hmm. And I went on a date with a guy who used to, who does that sort of thing. And I pitched him an idea and he, the guy wasn't for me, but we became best friends. And he says, oh my God, that's so weird. That's perfect for Hallmark. And I go, I love Hallmark. I've been watching Hallmark nonstop. Again, years ago, had the flu, got into the Christmas. It's basically, you know, uh, Christmas crack. But you don't have to watch Hallmark just for Christmas because it's 365 and the best rom-coms you'll ever watch. Yes, it is. So I gave him the idea and he took it to Hallmark and we sold it and we sold eight movies called uh, Matchmaker Mysteries with Danica McKellar. Our first one aired in December. The next one will be in March. And then I sold another rom-com like right before Christmas. And I'm like in this movie business of producing and I'm about to do horror too. And everyone told me, oh, you'll never jump the reality. You'll, you'll never jump the reality show to get into script and no one will ever accept you there. And I go, yeah, watch me. Wow. And that's what I mean about your guidance system, your knowing, going for your passion, stop listening to anybody else. Someone tells you you can't do something, say, you know what? Seriously. Because the truth is nobody knows better than you what you should be doing. But people told me, no, it's no different than someone saying, you'll never be an actor, you'll never be a singer, you'll never be a dancer, you'll never be a stockbroker, you'll never be a lawyer, you'll never be a doctor. Whatever your passion is, it will lead you to the right place. Sometimes you have ups and downs. It took a long time for Millionaire Matchmaker to get on the air. We kept going up and down and up and down until Bravo lovely came along. I was with another network before that. So you never know what tomorrow brings. You know, and that was a great money thing because I said, I want to go into a different business where I'm self-supported. I am enjoying the process. It's creative. And I made a list of everything I wanted and it's everything on that list. And I'm so grateful to Hallmark because it really was awesome to work there. Yeah. I watch it now just to support you a hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful thing. And that's what having a dream is all about. It, and part of the journey is the not knowingness. But right. And I took a risk. I took a risk. I took two years off. Mm. I said, I'm not going to go back on the air. I'm going to do something else because doing a television show is very time consuming. I produced it as well, you know, and I'm in all the phases of the, of the show. So it takes like nine months and then you collapse for three. So I needed a break. And I said, I'm going to do behind the scenes. I'm going to get in. And I had this vision of what it would look like. It, exactly the vision came. Like it's exactly what I predicted. Mm. And what was really interesting about it, it's opening the gates to other networks. I have other networks calling me now and asking me to come up with similar things or now we're getting into the horror business because I love supernatural witches and 
demons and angels. That's like my whole little genre. I'm buying options on books. And so it's really exciting. And it was, it was something that people said, you'll, you're too old. No one's going to pay attention. No one's going to take you seriously. And I went, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of like what you have, you're going to, you're going to make a statement about something you want financially, work-wise, love-wise, and people are going to go, you're nuts. You're crazy. I bet you they told you that when you started this like show. So, and then you're going to be like, yeah, but I feel it. I know it. So if you feel it and you know, which is what we're trying to get you, we're trying to get to a place of like the gut, the gut response, the all knowing gut. Remember it's the second brain. Mm -hmm. When you get to that gut place, all steam, ahead. Nobody's going to be able to stop you. No one. Mm -hmm. Patty, right here at the end, leave mm -hmm. us with this. What are a couple of things women can do in love to create a sustainable life partner? What do you see all the time that you wish, if only I could say this to women? Like, Well, I mean, man. I think negotiation. We go into these relationships and we keep our mouth shut and we're quiet and demure and we don't want to rock the boat and we don't state what we think and feel and want and desire. And we're afraid if we do, the men will run away. Oh, she's a pain in the ass. Well, you know what? He's a pain in the ass because there are things that may not blend with you and you're going to have to have like the Dak Shepard story. Like he said, I feel controlled because you, you made me fold two towels. I'm like, okay. Well, that's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have negotiation in your relationship where you're going to live. How are you going to live? Who's going to pay the bills? Oh my God, the money talk. Yeah. The money talk. How many women don't talk about the money until it's too late? And sometimes they end up supporting the man. Let's not forget that. There are, there are male gold diggers too. Um, the other thing is that when an issue happens, people get silent and they bury the lead. They go to bed that night and then it stews. And then the next thing you know, you're sleeping in separate bedrooms. So you need to get, look, if it's happening at 11 o'clock at night, you can say, look, can we talk at breakfast? Great, make 15 minutes time for me, you know? I always say to a man, my favorite technique to a man is to say, is this a good time for us to talk because I need to talk to you? Tell me when's a good time. And if he can't give you a good time, he's an avoider, which is gonna create more problems and he may not be your match. Because this business that men are this way, the Mars and Venus theory is really not accurate. You know, all men are not one way. All, I see more men like women and more women like men now. So this is not true anymore, especially since we started making money and running our own businesses. We are no longer, you know, like women are this and men are like that. That's ridiculous. We have to become men in some ways because we have to support ourselves because nobody's supporting it for us, mm -hmm. especially if you're a single mother and you got kids. I mean, feel, feel for them, what they're going through. So if you don't state your negotiation, learn how to negotiate. Learn how to put a smile on it, to take the tone down, no bitterness, no negativity, no criticism, and just say, I need this because this makes me feel X. How, do we, how can we get to a place to do that? Throw it on him. He doesn't come up with a solution. You got a communication problem, and that means you're headed to therapy. Got when it. he can't communicate with you, you're headed to therapy because okay. you need a bipartisan person. Deep. That's very deep. And communication's everything. Okay. So negotiation, big. The finance talk, big. Communication, big. And what about men? What are the things they need to show up for to create long lasting well, love? I think men need to stop thinking that once they got the girl, they don't, they're not planning the date anymore. Mm -hmm. I think that the secret sauce was that they planned it. And that's why women showed up. And I think if they start planning things, fun, romantic things, doesn't have to be expensive you're going to get a lot more nooky with that. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like we love, women love to reward, but men don't realize that. The other thing is the, the housework situation. If you're living in a house with someone, you're married or not, and you're, you're not, she's doing all the housework and you're not, she's going to resent you and close the drawbridge. It's just simple Sally syrup. You know, you've got, you've got to chip in, whether you do, you know, I say they're blue jobs and they're paint jobs. So if you want to do, take up the garbage, which I loathe, right? Or walk the dog and pick up the poo, I loathe. And I'm doing the laundry. That's a, that's a, you know, an even swap. 
you know, that sort of thing. Or you can pick up dinner now and then. Don't expect the woman to make all the meals. That's another thing that I hear a lot about. The other thing is that men have a tendency to withhold feelings because they're taught not to feel from infancy. So yes. if you're going through something that's bothering you, like this man calling you up and saying, we're breaking up, we're breaking up. I'll bet you, if you took that couple in front of me, he was withholding his feelings for a very long time until she said, I want to leave. Yeah. I want to leave. And they're not having a once a week stop and chat. I had a, a whole couple recently who did not communicate because they were always passing ships in the night. Their, sh their shifts were different during the day. He worked at night, she worked in the day. And they barely spoke. And when Sunday came, I said, what do you do? And they go, oh, we just want to be quiet. I said, you need 10 minutes of talk time to get the week out. Oh, I don't think I can do it. It went on for weeks. And finally, I sat him down and I said, okay, you talk. Tell me what your issues are. You talk. Tell me what your issues are. Okay, now we're going to come to an agreement for this, an agreement for that. And now they have 10 minutes every week and they love it. They look forward to it and it expanded to brunch. They go to brunch every Sunday. Uh -huh. They made it like a, an event. But you have to make it so that it's not scary. You're not criticizing. You're not putting them down. You're not calling them stupid. There's a lot of that going around. And we, when we fight, we fight below the belt. Yeah, it's very With attacking. No more fighting below the belt, above the belt. You don't yeah. have to hit him where it hurts just to be right. Totally right. Attacking is never going to get you heard also, which is ultimately what we all want. And I want to say to your point, it is so important, men, 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 because I know I have like a huge male population to listen right. to this show. And I, I really beseech you that if you want Nookie, and most of us want it as much as you do, we do what too. Yeah. juices going is when you show up romantically, when you say those affirming things. You look so beautiful today. You're the best looking woman in this room. I couldn't keep my eyes off of you, even if you've been together five uh -huh. years. Or, you know, or, if you, or if you touch us, grab my yes. hand, put your arm on my shoulder, put that jacket on when I'm shivering at night. Uh, my favorite is when you're in the car and he's driving and he puts his hands out if he's stopping short or the light changes. Like little things that are free, opening the car door, getting the, the waiter to come over and fill your Diet Coke. Like stupid stuff that costs nothing. I'm always like, this is where you feel taken care of and where you're just going to blossom. You're going to blossom. You're going to want to give him everything. That's but they don't think that. They think that they only do that in the stage to get you, and then they stop. And then you're like, wait a second. Like, I remember my ex saying to me, where's the quiet girl that was on all those dates? I'm like, where's the guy that was romantic? Maybe they should date. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we had this little joke about how we changed our personas. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, we're all in our best behavior. But I go, the truth is you stopped planning, and I became the man in planning. And once I resented you, you became my couch potatoes, pot smoking basement son that I don't want to sleep with anymore because I'm doing all the work. Yeah. And it's unattractive. I mean, I, I'm really there with you. And the simple things, what Patty's saying is true. Look, we love a nice dinner out in a nice hotel, but if you've got a rose bush, pick a few roses and bring them. Surprise me. Take me to a picnic and bring a bottle of wine and some cheese. It can be so simple, but it the, the littlest off. thing, your favorite this, your favorite that, you know, like, um, you know, picking up a present, like I'm, uh, so my touch is my first language and my second is gifts because my father would go on the road as a salesman and bring back tchotchkes and I, that's how I knew he loved me, right? So I was like, why do I only get a gift on my birthday or Christmas? Like, why don't you just pick something? And I would always give gifts to the guys mm -hmm. and it would irritate me that they wouldn't give it back the way I did it, even if it's something small, it doesn't mean, or throwing that card you know, and putting it into your pillow, a little love card. Little or stuff when you're stuff. traveling, that's the best. And you open your suitcase when you get to the new city, state, or country, and your beloved has tucked all these little love notes in your suitcase, and you're so surprised and overflowing. You I see more. I see more women planning the vacation because they're the budgeter of the family and then they end up making the plans for the restaurant or the, the, you know, the, the venue and the things that you do there, you know, the activities. And then the girl's exhausted. And she's like, I'm like, I don't even feel like I went on vacation because I did it all. And it was so sexy is when a man checks in at the airport, you know, and gets the tickets going and puts the, the luggage away. And you're just sitting there all pretty and just going, ah, I'm going on vacation because now I want to jump your bones. Because remember, the more work you give a woman, 
the more tired she is, the less she's going to have energy to give to you. Mic drop. That's all we got to say, folks. That was profound. Thank you, Patty, for coming. Okay, in the thanks for having me. Brilliance. This was awesome conversation. Thank you. Congratulations on your, on your success. Thank you. And I end this show with this quote from Andre Breton, which is, love is when you meet someone who tells you something new about yourself. I recommend that you subscribe to the show and tune in to the upcoming interviews. When you subscribe to Dare to Dream podcast, here's what's coming up and who's coming up next on this number one transformation conversation. Upcoming guests are James Redfield, who wrote The Celestine Prophecies, The Channel, Paul Selig, Dr. Shamini Jain, boy, is she going to share some interesting things, and the amazing third time on her show, on this show, Dr. Sue Mortar. She always blows our minds with the conversation. If you love this podcast and you'd like to see me and the guest, if visual is your speak, then go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And remember the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thanks for joining us today.